Hey, and thanks for taking the time to watch this week's Old Town Short. Remember and give thanks. I wonder, if I asked you to share a complaint or something that you're unhappy about right now, how quickly would one come to mind? For many of us, it wouldn't take long to come up with a whole list of things that we're unhappy with, right? Changes we don't like, things we don't want to do, or frustrations that we have. Sometimes it feels as though the world is living under a cloud of negativity, of hurt, and of unrest, doesn't it? We see it on the news, and we experience it in our everyday lives. People seem to thrive on conflict, putting others down and needing to get their own way. Sure, we've all been through a lot, and things still don't feel normal, but folks, think about how far we've come. I want to share a piece of a last year's Thanksgiving sermon with you as a reminder of where we were a year ago. Friends, this week we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving. I know that it's going to look and feel very different from most. But the truth is, our Thanksgiving holiday is not about having a picture-perfect meal. It's not about the way we've always done it before. It's not about football games and parades and large gatherings. Sure, that's what we've made it over the years, and that's what comes to mind. But what if this year, when those things can't happen, we think about Thanksgiving a little differently. And rather than focusing on what we don't have and what we can't do and who we can't gather with, we remember what the holiday is really about. Friends, I hope and I pray that this time next year, we're back to our gatherings. I hope we can worship in person in our beloved sanctuary and gather around the dinner table with family and friends. I hope we can go to parties and football games, go out to eat in restaurants and attend celebrations. But this year, let's make good choices. And rather than being mad or sad or frustrated that we can't have what we want and do what we normally do, Let's remember all the things that we are thankful for. Friends, when we think back to where we were last year, worshiping online and unable to gather even with family, and then we think about where we are now, why aren't we celebrating? Why aren't we living lives of gratitude and praising God with all we've got? I know things are far from perfect, but we've come so far. Have we forgotten? Or do we just always want more? Will we ever pop our heads above this cloud of negativity, hurt, and unrest? Or is this where we'll always be? Recently, I can't help but think of the story of Moses and how he led the Israelites for 40 years through the wilderness before they finally reached the Promised Land. I find it interesting that while we often focus on giving thanks for the gifts that we have been given and look for the good in each moment, the Bible often takes a different approach to thanksgiving. Rather than insisting on thankfulness, Scripture instead commands us to remember. The book of Deuteronomy is all about remembering. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and God brought you out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Remember what God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. Remember the long way that God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Remember and do not forget how you provoked God to wrath in the wilderness. 
Remember the days of old, considering the years long past. Ask your father and he will inform you, your elders and they will tell you. My friends, the book of Deuteronomy assumes that without remembering what God has done, there is no thanksgiving for what God is doing. Without remembering where God has led us, we can in no way thank God for how far we've come. So remembering is the key. But remembering can also be difficult and even painful sometimes. That's why many times it's easier to simply forget. Just before entering the promised land, Moses reminded his people where they had been. He said, God is about to bring you into a good land, a land with brooks and rivers, springs and lakes, streams out of the hills and through the valleys. It's a land of wheat and barley, of vines and figs and pomegranates, of olives and oil and honey. But Moses also warned them, make sure that when you eat and are satisfied, build pleasant houses and settle in, see your herds and flocks flourish and have more and more money come in. Make sure that you don't become full of yourself and your things that you forget about God, the God who delivered you from Egyptian slavery, the God who led you through that huge and fearsome wilderness, the God who gave you water gushing from a hard rock, the God who gave you manna to eat in the wilderness. If you start thinking to yourself, I did all this, it's all mine, well think again. Remember that God gave you the strength and the ability to do it. You see, my friends, Moses never said that it's bad to live in a fine house. He never said that it's bad for your herd and your flocks to multiply or for you to be successful. He simply said, don't think that it's all about you and your ability. Remember that it's God's doing. Remember that God has blessed you so that you might bless others. Friends, we have not returned to normal. Our church is not running as smoothly as it once was. And there are programs, events, and experiences that we all still miss. But rather than sitting and complaining or being frustrated and sad, we need to stretch ourselves to look above the clouds of negativity and remember where we've been and who and whose we are. Then we need to work together, not complaining about what we don't have or what we can't do or what's different or what we don't like, but instead putting our pride and our opinions and our judgments aside and truly listening for the voice of our still speaking God as we journey forward into the future together. So friends, as we gather around the dinner table with our families this week, thinking about the blessings in our lives and the things that we're thankful for, let us also take some time to remember. Remember the paths that we've walked. Remember the difficulties we faced. Remember the gifts we've received. And though things may not be exactly the way we want them to be right now, remembering that we are truly blessed and that the possibilities are endless, not because of us, but because of the one who created us.